There you go. Okay. Uh, it's great to be here with you today, and a lot of us were very disappointed with what happened today, okay? The deal is we had, we, we were dealt a hand that we didn't particularly care for, but I think our ultimate goal is, is this. Uh, on Thursday, and, and right now that's what we think it's going to be, it's on Thursday, it could be as far as Monday, but it's going to be an announcement, there's going to be a vote on the rules of the House, okay? Now this is why this is important. If, if legislation gets to the floor, the legislation we like, we're going to win, okay? You know what the problem's been? Legislation never got to the floor. And so there are several things that we want to do with the rules. First of all, we want to make sure, and, and this is something that's been done before, we want to make sure that if you're a committee chair, you're not on the calendars committee, okay? Because what that does is it continues to concentrate power in the hands of a relatively few people. What we want to do is diffuse power, decentralize power. Because what's been going on is, is this. Legislation will be filed, but it never gets through the process to get on the floor. The end result is, it's never voted on. And so they can come back and say, oh, well, I've got a conservative voting record, all this other stuff. But the fact is, a lot of the key legislation never ever got to the floor for us to even vote on in the first place. So. First of all, we want to diffuse power by making sure that committee chairs are not on the uh, calendars committee. Second thing is, is this, and we saw it a number of times last time. There would be bills that would have 76, 80, 90, and plus co-authors on the bill. You had that many co-authors on the bill, and yet that bill never got to the floor. Okay, so you knew, like, in, in fact, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, David Simpson's bill, the TSA bill, that probably had over a hundred. Yet they let it kind of walk through. It it, it kind of got to the floor, but and, and during the regular session, it got out of the house, went over to the Senate, died in the Senate. But then during the spe uh, special session. They kicked it out of the Senate, and we had one that came through the House. The deal was, on, on the Friday before the end of the session, it was on the floor, should have been called up for a vote, and the Speaker didn't do that. Okay, But the deal was, it should have gotten to the floor a whole lot earlier. And what we can do is, is this. There's, uh, they've used it in the U.S. Congress. Previous Speakers have had this as a policy. And the policy is, is this, if a bill has 76 plus uh, authors and, and joint authors, the authors or co-authors on the bill, that bill will get to the floor. And it will get to the floor within about a 7 to 10 day time period from the time that you got that uh, 76 plus authors or co-authors on the bill. So. This is not something that's unprecedented. It's been used in other areas, but it is a way to prevent, because here's one of the problems that been. You will have a locally elected official who becomes committee chair, and they thwart the will of the entire House. And when they thwart the, they thwart the will of the House, they're thwarting the will of the people of Texas. So here's, here's what the, the argument is, okay? on Thursday or, or Monday, you're either going to be voting to diffuse power or you're going to be voting to centralize power and put the power in the hands of a few people or put the power in the hands of the members of the House. Thus, in the, mem in the hands of the people of Texas. Will these be recorded <laughs> votes for those? Yes. They will be recorded votes and we're going to, you're going to be out there to hear everything going on. You'll hear all the arguments that are made. And what I would suggest is, this is the vote that you need to really double down on. Because... So what I, so I call Dr. Bonnet, what do I ask him to, to vote? I, I, I would say, uh, vote for 
What is it? Do you have a putting uh, decentralizing power? Decentralizing you power. A, you don't have an identification. Or well, you could say we want to make sure that committee chairs are not serving on the calendars committee and what you call a bill of petition. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's what they call it. That's what that's what they call it in U.S. Congress. It's called a bill of petition. In other words, you get 76 plus uh, authors, joint authors on the bill. That bill will get to the floor. Good. Okay. Yeah, yeah Bob. That's a that's like a surrogate vote against Joe Strauss. How how are these? We're going to define 76 reps with enough courage to vote to do that when they wouldn't vote for, for David Simpson. Okay. Very easy. First of all, uh, in, in, uh, even a lot of the people who are voted for Strauss, be, well, I voted for Strauss because he's going to win. Okay? Yeah, I, he's going to win. So that kind of, uh, in, in fact, that's basically what happened uh, with this vote when it got down to it. They said, wait a minute. Uh, one of the issues was that a lot of people felt that they had been promised that they would not take the vote for the floor if there wasn't a reasonable chance of winning. And basically what we looked at is that there's no way he's going to win. Now, I was willing to still go ahead and do it. But there were a lot of people that weren't, and the end result was that it, it kind of created a, a, a fracture within, the, within conservative voters. Okay, And the thing about it is, is, is that the other thing is it's easier, but let me tell you, you get out in the hitherlands here, and people don't know Joe Strauss, and they don't know David Simpson. But you know what they do understand? They understand that you're either going to say, you, you, do you favor decentralization of the power, or do you put the power in the hands of relatively few people? Yeah, but, so you're saying, do you feel that, that David has gotten enough verbal commitment from enough people that this is a viable vote? Yeah. I still think you got the fear factor of those that didn't have the courage to stand up to Joe Strauss and they But I, here's the deal, I think it'll be easier to make the argument that, you know, you know, rather than get all into the personalities of here's Joe Strauss, here's David Simpson, stuff like that, it's just you favor centralization of power, you want to put power in the hands of a few people, or do you want to put power in the hands of the majority of the members of the House? Do you Joe Strauss will fight this? You know, I, I, I suspect some of his lieutenants will, uh, and uh, it's hard to say whether Joe will or not. That's been one of the big issues with uh, some of this. Some people, like for instance, when it got to redistricting, some people said, well, that really wasn't Joe doing that. That was Burke Solomon's. Well, there's only one problem. Joe Strauss put Burke Solomon's there. Uh, and, but... The thing about it is, is it's more difficult to, to uh, counter that argument, okay? Oh, so you're in favor of putting the hands in a few people. Let me ask you this. This answer you said, one question. Do you think that a locally elected official should be able, uh, who's sitting as a committee chair should be able to thwart the will of the House? No. And, 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 and you know what? Most people who don't know uh, David Simpson and don't know Joe Strauss from Adam's Hat Band, well, you know what? They, they'd say, no. And yet, let me tell you, see, that's going to be a key vote that people can put down on. Okay, voted to put the, uh, to the power in the hands of a few people versus putting the power in the hands of the majority. That, of vote, that, that, that vote has got some legs. Yeah, exactly. I guarantee you this, when you call your state representative, and you say, listen, we want you to vote to decentralize the power, to give the power back to the state representatives across the state um, because those state representatives are us. Right. Yeah. And then they say, no, ho oh, ho, wait till voting time. Hey, that, here's, that here's, what I would, here, here's what I would ask. I, I would ask, do you support allowing a locally elected official who's acting as committee chair to thwart the will of the House? Pure and simple. So, do you support allowing a locally elected official who's acting as committee chair to thwart the will of the House? So, I don't know. I, I'm going to call it a procedure because I don't know if it's a bill or a resolution or what this procedure is that you're referring to. But uh, it, it, it's a fight for the rules. The rules of the. In other words, every every time we start off a session, we create rules to the way we'll operate under. How confident are, uh, are you that this will even come 
up so they can't get Oh, oh they, they cannot squash it. Because, first of all, they're going to have a resolution saying, this is the way we think it ought to be, just like a bill would do. This is the way we think that ought to, the rules ought to be. We have the ability at that point to amend what we don't like. And there's going to be, I've already gotten the... <clears throat> you feel that the conservatives like yourself will stand up and vote? I believe so. Okay. so. Bill, will, will you do this for us? Right. Will you send one of us, Alice, myself, Dale, whoever, send us the the, the, the nuts and bolts of this okay. so that we can get it out on 911. Tea Party 911, everybody. Okay. Huh? Okay. Okay. Two things. Number one, who's going to be drafting this in the actual text? We, we've already drafted it. Okay. Yeah, we're going to probably make a few minor changes in it, but right. that's basically the, the gist of what the legislation or, or the, the bill says. Thing. I just want to apologize to you by giving your staffer hell, holy hell, <laughs> when I heard, when I first heard that it was a quote-unquote done deal today, I just lost it. So I wanted to apologize to you. No problem. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, let me tell you, you, you I, wanted, I want you to know I was mad. that, well, let me tell you, as we've gone through this process, too many ways I feel like I've had my guts ripped out. Not from you people. But from seeing what some of my colleagues have done, so, Rick. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, is a copy of that resolution, if you will, that that language of, of how you're going to vote Thursday or Monday, available to us to post, so that we could inform people with the exact language. Can I can understand how? Let me let me see if we can be a little confused. Yeah into what you mean by a local elected person. And and, and I want to put it in this in, in this fashion. Do you want tyranny or do you want liberty? And that's the bottom line here. And that's what most people understand. Yeah. Uh, well, in, in the hands of a few or in the hands of all is, is, is to say one thing. But most people understand that one is tyranny and one is liberty. Right, right. So. Is that language available? Uh, yes, and it, what what I'll have to do is maybe email it to you or something like Absolutely. that. Okay. We'll get it on, on the state party website. Well, I, you know, what you're saying is good. I support transparency and dissolution of power sets. But you know what? For, since the Republican com uh, com uh, convention here in Texas, we've had conservatives say, I'm going to challenge the speaker, which we don't like. We don't think since the report in Texas has done a good job. We asked Brian Hughes over and over, are you committed? Are you going to run? The answer was always yes. And, and, and then David Simpson says, I'll carry the banner because I think I can do better. And, and that was done. And we asked up until last night, we asked. And you know what? This is the second session in a row that our champion gave up before the votes were taken. I'd just like to see one guy from our legislature stand up as a conservative and challenge all the way through to a damn vote. Yeah. 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 Hey, listen, I understand, and we didn't like the ultimate decision that came down, but basically what it boiled down to was, you know, uh, when, when some people said, look, the, 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 the thing that you told us was that if the, the only way, the reason, you would only take it to the floor if there was a reasonable chance of winning. He was the wrong guy. Yeah. Well, not taking a vote on the floor is a vote for Strauss. So that does not take away the accountability for that vote. Well, you know, time, he, there, there were legislators that ran on that issue, and they failed to step yeah. up. So, uh, you know, uh, a lot of us looked at it and said, okay, you know, because, I, I listen, I told David, listen, listen. I'll, I'll vote for you on the floor if there's just three of us. You know, you, me, Brian Hughes. Uh, but, you know, what what we would be doing is forcing everybody else to vote yes. as well. Exactly. And, and you know what? We felt like, okay, we're not going to win, but we may also fracture some of our ability to get the rules changes that we really, I think, will be, that is a, that is a, that, that is a fight we can win. That is a fight we can win. We and we decided to say, okay, we want to, we want to say, okay, we'll back off from a fight we could not win, and move it to a fight that we felt we could win. 
I'm sorry. Yeah, I just, it seems like a lot of um, why you think this is a better fight is it's a lot easier to explain decentralizing power in a 30 second TV commercial mm -hmm. than it is to explain who Joe Strauss exactly. is to a low information voter. Exactly. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. You know, this is why Joe Strauss shouldn't be speaker versus David Simpson. You know, you got to go through all the stuff on it. And what it boils down to is, hey, listen, I felt comfortable with the narrative, but I'm, I'm and y'all are very much in the know. But you try and get it out to Joe Pert, the guy that they may be showing up in every primary and stuff like that, but that's it. Hey, listen, uh, I appreciate you guys. Continue the fight because you know what? Things weren't done in one election cycle or two. And what we got to look at and say, a lot of times, the battle is not exactly what we thought it was going to be, but I think there is a way to, to win with this because the winner will be if we can get a uh, legislation that is supported by the majority of the members of the House to the floor. And what we'll want you to do at that point is call your elected official and say, will you sign on to bill whatever it is? Because you know what? If they won't do it, as far as I'm concerned, that's as good of uh, uh, that's as good as a vote no. All right? Are and these you, lieutenants elected officials? No. Well, in other words, they're all elected officials. No, I'm about the lieutenants. Yeah, they're all elected officials. Okay. We're not well, talking about well let, let, let me rephrase that. There, are, there, there would be a couple of that are staff. Okay. Okay. I was, I was trying to separate Jake between staff and, and yeah. actual. Uh, like so listen, thank you very much. God bless you guys. Continue the fight. But what we want to do is take this, get it out on, it's either going to be Thursday or Monday. And uh, we just need to get that uh, that uh, information out. Okay?